plans to install seismic monitoring equipment at Glacier Peak, one of Washington State's very high threat volcanoes, have been postponed until 2026. Originally scheduled for completion in 2025, the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, has redirected its focus to address seismic activity at Mount Adams. According to Benjamin Pauk, a geophysicist at the USGS Cascade Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, logistical complications hindered the Glacier Peak project. Last summer, a helicopter contracted to transport portable monitoring stations to the remote Cascade Range location, cancelled at the last minute due to the company's unexpected closure. This happened in August when most other helicopters were occupied with wildfire response, Pauk explained. Beyond transportation issues, accessing the sensor sites poses its own challenges, requiring scientists to trek through rugged, off-trail terrain. These areas aren't on established paths, so it involves bushwhacking and steep climbs, Pauk added. Despite Glacier Peak's high threat status, unusual seismic activity at Mount Adams has prompted USGS to prioritize it instead. John Major, head of the Cascade Volcano Observatory, explained that Mount Adams, typically considered low threat, has shown atypical movement. In September, there were six recorded earthquakes, which is a significant increase compared to the usual one every two to three years, noted USGS geophysicist Alex Ayezi. This activity has captured scientists' attention and spurred plans to install monitoring equipment at Mount Adams by mid-2025. We're adjusting our efforts to respond to these developments, Major said. Major emphasized that seismic activity in the Cascade Range is not uncommon. For instance, Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier often experience monthly earthquake frequencies in the double digits. These episodes of increased seismicity can last days to weeks and are part of the region's normal activity, Major noted. What's happening at Mount Adams stands out because it's unusual for this specific volcano. At 12,277 feet, 3,742 meters, tall and 18 miles, 29 kilometers wide, Mount Adams is Washington's largest active volcano by volume, surpassing even Mount Rainier, the state's tallest peak. The recent rise in seismic activity near Mount Adams, including a magnitude 0.9 earthquake on Sunday, October 6th, does not suggest an eruption is imminent, experts have confirmed. The tremors have been minor, with magnitudes ranging from 0.9 to 2. These earthquakes were too small to be felt by anyone near Mount Adams, explained John Major of the USGS Cascade Volcano Observatory. Mount Adams last erupted around 4,000 years ago, but this extended period of dormancy does not mean an eruption is overdue. Volcanoes don't follow predictable schedules, each has its own unique behavior, Major said. Some can erupt sporadically for centuries, then remain inactive for thousands of years. Known for its slow-moving lava flows rather than explosive activity, Mount Adams poses a different primary hazard, lahars. These fast-moving mud flows composed of ash, rock, and ice can rush downhill like liquid concrete, potentially causing significant damage to downstream areas, according to a USGS statement. The summit of Mount Adams also contains weakened, unstable rock, adding to the risk. Major pointed out that volcanoes usually provide clear warning signs before erupting, they typically produce numerous earthquakes that increase in frequency and magnitude, he said. Additional warning indicators include ground deformation caused by rising magma, detectable with GPS and satellite technology, and the release of volcanic gases. These are the signs we watch for to assess the likelihood of an eruption, Major added. Currently, only one permanent seismic monitoring station is positioned around 7 miles, 11 kilometers, southwest of Mount Adams Summit. However, there are plans to install additional monitoring equipment next summer. At this stage, we don't have enough data to make definitive conclusions, Major noted. Once new stations are in place and have gathered data over time, we'll have a clearer understanding of the seismic activity and its significance. David Pyle, a volcanologist from the University of Oxford, suggested the recent seismic events could be due to various factors, including stress within the volcano's rock layers. This small cluster of quakes is unusual, given Mount Adams' long period of quiet, Pyle said. It's too early to pinpoint a cause, but the current monitoring system has proven its effectiveness, allowing scientists to intensify their observations using ground-based and satellite instruments. In contrast, Glacier Peak, one of Washington's most active volcanoes, poses a significant threat despite its remote location. 
having erupted six times in the last 300 years, Glacier Peak's hazards are often underestimated due to its wilderness setting. An eruption could trigger lahars that threaten communities in the Skagit Valley by blocking roads, damaging infrastructure, and burying farmland and homes. However, if Mount Adams were to erupt after thousands of years of dormancy, the impact would depend on the size, style, and specific areas affected. As the largest active volcano in Washington by volume, its eruption could be significant. Mount Adams typically produces effusive eruptions, which involve slow-moving lava flows rather than explosive activity. While these eruptions are less likely to cause widespread devastation, they could still lead to considerable localized damage to landscapes, ecosystems, and infrastructure. However, if the eruption involved magma interacting with water, it could result in explosive activity, ashfall, and pyroclastic flows, increasing the potential for destruction. One of the greatest risks would be lahars, or volcanic mudflows, which are created when heat from the eruption melts summit ice and mixes with loose debris. Given the mountain's unstable summit rock and extensive snow and ice, lahars could travel rapidly down valleys, threatening downstream communities. Towns along rivers like the Klickitat and White Salmon would be particularly vulnerable, with lahars capable of damaging infrastructure, blocking transportation routes, and burying farmland. Ashfall could also pose a serious hazard, especially in the event of an explosive eruption. While effusive eruptions generally produce limited ash, an explosive scenario could result in widespread ash deposition. Locally, ashfall could damage crops, contaminate water supplies, and disrupt transportation. Depending on wind patterns, the ash could also affect air travel and impact nearby cities. The economic consequences of an eruption could be severe. Agricultural areas, such as the Yakima Valley, might face long-term damage from ash and lahars, while critical infrastructure, including roads and power lines, could be destroyed. Additionally, tourism and recreation, which are vital to the region, would likely suffer significant losses as Mount Adams is a popular destination for hiking and other outdoor activities. The eruption would also have devastating effects on local wildlife and ecosystems. Forests, rivers, and animal habitats could be severely impacted, with recovery taking decades or even centuries. Responding to an eruption at Mount Adams could present serious logistical challenges due to its remote and rugged terrain. Rescue and evacuation efforts might be hindered, and nearby communities may not be as prepared as those near more closely monitored volcanoes like Mount Saint, Helens, or Mount Rainier. Although Mount Adams is less likely to produce a catastrophic eruption compared to highly explosive volcanoes, its size and potential to generate large lahars make it a significant threat. A major eruption would be devastating for local communities, infrastructure, and ecosystems, even if it didn't match the explosiveness of the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. If Mount Adams were to erupt, the areas most at risk would span a wide geographic range, with the scale of devastation depending on the eruption's magnitude and type. The most immediate and severe threats would arise in the river valleys that drain the volcano, such as the Klickitat, White Salmon, and Lewis Rivers. These valleys are natural conduits for lahars, or volcanic mudflows, which could be triggered by the heat of the eruption melting the summit's snow and glaciers. Lahars are capable of moving at high speeds, carrying debris, rock, ash, and water far from their source. Communities situated along these rivers, including Trout Lake, Glenwood, Husum, and BZ Corner, would be particularly vulnerable. Lahars could obliterate homes, block transportation routes, and damage farmland, potentially rendering these areas uninhabitable for months or even years. In addition to lahars, the immediate slopes and base of Mount Adams would face other volcanic hazards, such as lava flows and pyroclastic activity. Although Mount Adams is known for effusive eruptions, where lava moves slowly and spreads across the landscape, the damage to infrastructure, forests, and ecosystems could be immense. Lava flows might not travel as far as lahars, but their ability to bury roads, destroy structures, and ignite wildfires would create significant challenges for emergency responders and local communities. The rugged terrain of the volcano's surroundings would complicate evacuation efforts, leaving hikers, campers, and others in the wilderness particularly at risk. 
Ashfall represents another major hazard that could extend far beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. Regions within 10 to 30 miles of Mount Adams, such as the Yakima Valley, Goldendale, and Hood River, would likely experience heavy ash deposits. This ash could contaminate water supplies, damage crops, and create health risks, especially for individuals with respiratory conditions. Further afield, cities like Portland, Oregon, and southeastern Washington might also be affected, depending on wind patterns. Ashfall could disrupt daily life by reducing visibility, halting transportation, and causing power outages as ash accumulates on electrical grids and machinery. Air travel would likely be severely impacted as well, with ash plumes threatening flight paths near regional airports like Portland International Airport and Yakima Air Terminal. Another significant danger would come from the destabilization of the summit's glaciers. The heat from an eruption could lead to glacial outburst floods, which are sudden and highly destructive surges of water that flow downstream with immense force. These floods would pose a severe risk to communities located near river mouths and floodplains, compounding the destruction caused by lahars. The economic and environmental impacts of a Mount Adams eruption would be far-reaching. The Yakima Valley, a vital agricultural region, could suffer devastating losses due to ash deposition contaminating soil and water. Crops might fail, livestock could be affected, and the financial toll on farmers and the local economy would be significant. Forest ecosystems around the volcano, home to diverse wildlife, could be severely damaged or destroyed. The recovery of these ecosystems could take decades, or even centuries, with long-lasting effects on biodiversity and the region's natural beauty. Transportation infrastructure would also be at risk. Major roadways like US Route 97 and State Routes 14 and 142 could be blocked or buried by lahars, cutting off access to affected areas and isolating communities. This would hinder evacuation efforts and delay emergency responses, making it difficult to provide aid to those in need. In addition, the disruption of key transportation routes would have ripple effects on regional trade and commerce. Responding to an eruption at Mount Adams would present unique challenges due to the volcano's remote location and rugged terrain. Emergency response teams would need to navigate difficult conditions to reach those in danger. Establishing exclusion zones around the volcano and along high-risk river valleys would be essential to protect lives, but these measures could displace large numbers of residents. Temporary shelters and evacuation centers would need to be set up in safe areas, adding strain to local resources and infrastructure. Despite the potential risks, Timely warnings and proactive measures could help mitigate the damage. Enhanced monitoring of Mount Adams, including the installation of additional seismic and GPS stations, would improve scientists' ability to detect early signs of volcanic activity. Public education campaigns about evacuation routes and emergency procedures would also be critical in ensuring that residents and visitors are prepared to respond quickly. By combining scientific preparedness with community readiness, the impacts of an eruption at Mount Adams could be managed and minimized. In addition, the eruption of Mount Adams is unlikely to directly trigger eruptions at other volcanoes within the Cascade Range due to the unique, independent characteristics of each volcano's volcanic plumbing and magma systems. Each volcano in the Cascade Volcanic Arc has its own distinct reservoir of magma, fed by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the North American Plate. These systems operate independently, meaning that an eruption at one volcano does not automatically lead to activity at another. However, there are a few factors that could, under certain conditions, influence other nearby volcanoes. One potential indirect mechanism involves stress changes in the Earth's crust. If Mount Adams were to erupt, it could alter the stress fields in the surrounding crust. This alteration might impact the magma chambers or fault lines of other nearby volcanoes, potentially increasing the likelihood of activity at those volcanoes. However, this effect is generally localized and would depend on how close other volcanoes are to Mount Adams and their individual volcanic conditions. The actual impact on nearby volcanoes would be minimal unless they are already at a heightened state of activity or on the verge of erupting independently. Historically, there is no strong evidence of one cascade volcano directly triggering the eruption of another. For instance, the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens did not result in eruptions at nearby volcanoes such as Mount Rainier or Mount Adams. 
This suggests that the Cascade Range's volcanoes operate largely as independent entities. The range does not exhibit the sort of interconnected volcanic activity seen in some other volcanic regions around the world. While volcanic activity can sometimes influence regional tectonic activity, for example, a significant eruption might cause increased seismicity in the region. This does not necessarily lead to eruptions at other Cascade volcanoes. Globally, volcanic interactions that trigger eruptions across multiple volcanoes are extremely rare. Most Cascade volcanoes operate independently, each governed by its own magma reservoir and set of conditions. There are no documented cases within the Cascade Range where an eruption at one volcano directly resulted in an eruption at another. Instead, volcanic activity within the Cascades is primarily driven by the unique geological characteristics and processes specific to each volcano. Monitoring efforts, including the installation of additional seismic and GPS stations, help scientists keep track of each volcano's behavior and detect early signs of activity. While an eruption at Mount Adams could alter local conditions, the likelihood of triggering eruptions at other nearby volcanoes remains low due to the independent nature of their volcanic systems. Each volcano's behavior is a reflection of its own magma supply and tectonic setting, making them unique entities within the Cascade Volcanic Arc. While an eruption may not be imminent, the increased activity at this largest active volcano in Washington State is a reminder of the unpredictable nature of volcanic systems in the Cascade Range. As always, preparedness and vigilant monitoring are key to understanding and mitigating potential risks. Make sure to stay informed and subscribe to our channel for more updates on this and other intriguing natural phenomena. Until next time, keep exploring and stay safe.